Happy Sunday, everybody. My name is Catherine. Welcome to my channel. I'm doing a Tao and Tarot message reading tonight. Well, message, messages. <laughs> so I'll be drawing one Tao oracle card and then uh, three tarot cards for each sign. Everything will be time stamped, of course, for you. You can find that either in the comment or the description box. So let us begin with Aries, of course. I am following the natural order of the zodiac. But I'm sure you are accustomed to those. <laughs> My Tao Oracle deck is in French. I will be translating. So Aries, what do we have for you? <laughs> La croissement. It means an increase. So it says sharing, rewards, overflow, expansion, um, blooming, encouragement, uh, a fertile um, terrain or you know, something fertile and abundance, of course. So that's such a Jupiterian in Aries energy. <laughs> Huge expansion for you for at least half of the, the year, 2023. So let's get some tarot cards for you. Only three cards I will be pulling. Three of Wands, Six of Pentacles in Reverse, and the Six of Swords in Reverse. So, <laughs> uh, double six here, right? And they're in Reverse. So I am sensing that Six of Pentacles in Reverse is it would be a lack of give and take with somebody or within a situation. And so it is a little bit contradicting the message regarding um, expansion and an increase for the moment. Some of, the, some of it is due to a lack of forward movement or things just picking up. So it feels business-like, but it could be any situation. Because the Three of Wands here is telling you that it's only a matter of time. You're anticipating a change, but you're also anticipating, um, for some reason, a lack of expansion. So I don't know why your mindset is more negative than positive here, but you are... Um, so currently experiencing the fact that it's not expanding, whatever situation that is. But I feel like it will expand, maybe not just yet. So obviously, timing-wise, we all know March will be really defining in 2023 for those who follow astrology, so definitely there will be huge shifts during which probably then you'll finally feel this expansion. But right now, you know, <laughs> this ideally, if everything would have been, uh, I mean, how can I say? What would have been really nice would, would be to have seen three, six and nine, right? But what's actually happening happening is three six six, so it's like hitting a plateau. <laughs> Just because three six and nine are are multiples, of course. So I will draw. Sorry, draw a trinket. It'll make a lot of noise. I apologize. You get the butterfly.
butterfly would be the expansion per se. So I am going to put the butterfly on the expansion card, but on the increase. <laughs> but know that you're probably still in the chrysalid phase at the moment. That's what it's feeling like. But it's only a matter of time until you turn into that beautiful butterfly and eventually take your, um, you know, open your wings and fly. <laughs> okay, let's do Taurus. So let's get a Tao message. A message. <laughs> this time it's only a message. So Tao message for Taurus, please. What is the energy? <laughs> the opposite of uh, Aries, stagnation. So alienation, an impasse, a stagnation, resistance, immo immobilization, a lack of sensitivity, and feeling um, defiant, not defiant, uh, mifiance. Like you don't trust, right? Weary, something like that. I don't have the precise word. Apologies for that. Let's get the tarot. They almost flipped and fell, but I will pull. That's the tarot message for Taurus. That ties in with the oracle, please. The Page of Cups, the Knight of Wands, and the Fool in Reverse. So, it's really interesting. It's exactly the opposite of Aries. You might want to watch the Aries. I will timestamp everything, as I've said earlier. But Aries had expansion in the, in the Oracle, and the Tarot was basically saying the expansion wasn't going to happen just yet. You have stagnation in the oracle, and then your cards are showing, you know, messages of love, rapid movement, someone coming towards you fast uh, with a lot of passion and a lot of things to tell you, and yet they're not taking the leap. <laughs> and so they're going to, at the last, very last minute, right before diving in, they're actually going to hold back and stagnate everything. So... It's a really incredible um, crisscross energy. So even if you don't have specific placements in Aries, um, do go watch the Aries reading. It's just interesting how it um, crosses over. Let me just draw a trinket. Apologies for the noise here. get the uh, the tie which obviously I'm not gonna necessarily interpret as uh, at least not in this case as a uh, dressing up formally etc I feel that something is tied right and it's it's the fool the fool is actually um, held back maybe by something there is definitely um, It's also like crossing a line because I see the tie as a basically almost like a rope or a cord and then it turns into like the expression of just being a line and so it's it's like the ravine that the jump that the fool is not jumping into is that line this there's a line that's not being crossed by this person it could be you, Taurus. I don't know if it's someone else. It, it's you're gonna eventually, um, obviously, figure it out for yourself. But that's the message here. Let's do Gemini. What is Gemini's Tao message? So 
for those who've um, used the timestamp, I will um, translate because the tarot card is in French. It says obstacles, les obstacles. It reads obstructions, um, unforeseen obstructions, frustration, difficulties, uh, feeling powerless, uh, struggle and discouragement. Okay, so a little, a little on the heavy side, right? Let's see what the tarot says before we say anything else. There's a card that turns six of pentacles in reverse. I'm just going to shuffle a bit more and pull the two other ones. Okay, what is the rest of this energy, please? Strength in reverse, holding back, and the Knight of Wands in reverse. Well, the main obstacle is the first card, of course. It's the Six of Pentacles in reverse, meaning you don't feel something is, is reciprocal. Something is really not aligned here with you, for which you're, from which I want to say you're holding back. And most probably deciding to turn around and... Uh, Either move away from, um, the only thing um, that's really needed here, what I'm, <laughs> it's funny how I, I said it all wrong. What you need to know is there's an ebb and flow on this card, right? This is coming in, coming, going out, like it's, a, it's the ebb and flow feeling. Which is why you're not sensing a sense of balance because one day it's there, one day it's not. You know, sometimes the person is there, sometimes the person is not. It could be you doing this, of course. I'm not really reading um, all of these uh, readings and messages are not necessarily one-sided. Could be you, could be someone else, could be a situation. It is making you feel powerless, which was the obstacle um, oracle message, right? The fact that it, these obstacles are rendering you powerless or feeling powerless. I don't think that you're fully powerless. It's, it's a, an impression. It's your perception of things. I am sensing annoyance, for sure. There's uh, specifically annoyance, obviously, on the Knight of Wands. So either annoyance with the situation towards someone else, towards the obstacles in general. There's feeling annoyed specifically towards um, having to take the time to tame the lion. So you're clearly annoyed because you're impatient about um, either submission or... Submission is a big word here, but it's just the taming energy, right? Having to kind of... It's about power because when when the person on the strength card, when she opens the lion's mouth, the lion is so powerful, right? And um, it requires power to overcome a powerful animal. I feel you get annoyed and impatient at having to do that. You get annoyed at having to render someone or something docile, right? You are kind of, I'm going to say it the way it comes, beating them into submission. 
I don't like that because all of these, uh, especially the last few sentences I've been saying, are all geared towards a power struggle, which is really not what I'm fully sensing for one. And so I don't want to really make it that. It is a little bit there, but it's it's not so much wanting to win at all costs or being better than, not like that. But there is a... Um, a situation where you're really wanting um, someone to bend so I'm not sure for what reason uh, because obviously it depends on the context the situation and you would know so let's draw a trinket sorry for the noise <laughs> get the microscope um, Maybe the taming energy is, um, I'm choosing, I don't know. That's an interesting choice there. It might also go on the obstacles, right? The obstacles might appear to be big, but in fact, they're small. For one, if I put it on the strength card, it's the same thing. It's the idea that something appears more difficult uh, than it really is. So rendering this person submissive, um, it's probably already the case. The person's probably already uh, bent a knee, right? So um, I think you're applying a little too much strength and you're insisting a little too much here. Coming in, you know, many, many times at it trying to rectify something um, constantly that probably doesn't need rectifying because it's it's probably um, not such a big obstacle you know because I really feel that these two cards, ultimately what they're saying they're both showing flux so either um obviously being Taurus you're fixed so you're not very comfortable with um mutable or mutability but this is what's required there's a little sailboat on the water here maybe you require a little bit more flexibility <laughs> anyway let's do Gemini What is uh, Gemini's Tao message? Gemini, what is this energy for you? Okay, what are you dealing with? <laughs> it says, before the accomplishment, avant l'accomplissement. It reads, uncertainty uh, doubt and hesitation maybe a lack of uh, confidence unstable conditions being extremely vigilant it has the word discord but let's draw the tarot and really see what's going on here but definitely of course if um, you're right before accomplishing something so you're considering I guess as per this card, what potentially could go wrong, or at least um, you're considering all possibilities, right? All outcomes. Okay, let's draw these three tarot cards for you. What is this energy for you, Gemini? The Eight of Swords in reverse the star card in reverse, and the ace of swords upright. I really enjoy this reading. Uh, it's short, but it, it's, you know, this would be the decisive moment of basically when you decide to accomplish something. And this is the before the accomplishment. So it's in line with the energy of the oracle. 
So you're working yourself up towards a decision, towards the moment where you take action for sure. When you have clarity about it, when you feel that it's the right time. But before the accomplishment, this is, <laughs> it's interesting, this is a pessimistic, uh, doubtful attitude, the star in reverse. You're obviously thinking it might not work out. So same keywords as for the oracle. You're wondering uh, <laughs> about the outcome. Um, and unfortunately, you're kind of looking at it uh, more on the negative side, thinking it might not work out. So what's beautiful, though, is that the Eight of Swords is in reverse. So you're seeing that you're in your head about it. So you, you probably are able to untangle yourself um, and reach a higher level of security or feeling safe about um, making the decision, whatever that thing is, excuse me, towards, um, so being decisive about someone, about a situation, about a move, um, taking action really. Let's get a trinket, sorry for the noise. I can't believe this. I drew the sword and you have the ace of swords. That's beautiful. It's really beautiful energy. You know, it's more than a decision. There's something, there's a defining moment for the sword to come out twice. Um, whatever decision and action you, you take, um, has really important consequences here more than maybe other decisions you've taken in the past. So I invite you, it's important maybe that you think positively about it rather than negatively as much as possible. <laughs> Change your perspective on it, right? So but there's a lot of, uh, I was going to put it back, um, but before. I'm going to say the way it came to me, and I really had to stop myself before putting back the trinket, right? Um, the word that came was truth, and that I hadn't said that needed to be said. And then the other words that came were about truth. It's not... Um, so much living your truth here. This is about telling the truth. Let's go for cancer now. <laughs> so, Oracle Tao, Tao Oracle message for cancer. Let's see what that energy is. you've uh, clicked the timestamp the oracles in french i will translate are oh, beautiful interior truth la vérité intérieure it says wisdom of the heart vision clarity purity um, intuitive uh, knowing consciousness and uh, recognizing illusion it's funny because if you have taurus placements uh, sorry, Gemini placements. Um, the Ace of Swords, quote unquote, came out came out twice for them, and truth was important, so it might relate to you. It might be meaningful. If not, uh, you don't have to watch it. Of course not. So, Cancer, your cards flipped. I don't have to cut and pull you get the queen of wands in reverse the ace of pentacles in reverse and this is the page of swords in reverse i'm 
hearing um I'm hearing the word stagnation specifically um but really what it is is passivity right so I'm not sure why you're so turned inward, which is kind of a Cancerian uh, thing sometimes, but more more so here. So maybe it's to explore your personal truth, your inner truth. But there's something else here. Um, I don't feel... Because the Queen of Wands and the Ace of Pentacles are in reverse. I'm sensing that you are... Angry, why are you angry? I specifically heard you're angry. You're angry and you're shutting your eyes and you're refusing to, to participate. Point blank, all channeled, I'm not sure why. This is all like words I'm hearing and um, I think it's because people don't believe you. I know this is about inner truth on the Oracle, but it, it comes back to this Gemini uh, message, which is not yours, but something about telling the truth. And I feel that even when you are in your truth, you feel that people don't believe you or you feel not accepted and it makes you really angry uh you're you're reacting strongly here and you're shutting yourself off to participating and initiating and um i want to say even moving into creation Whether it's in business, whether no matter what you're initiating, of course it's pentacles. It would be something very tangible, something very practical that um, that you know that you'd be doing. Um, this is not just a, a thought or a dream, or this is something um, specifically uh, It's like, obviously, I have the words like material, but, and like 3D or, but the material one is the one that just made me smile here. Um, because I don't feel this is material, about being materialistic. <laughs> because uh, what you're displaying is not so much, uh, let's say, your money, whatever, your success. It's really, you want to be taken and seen on a truth level and you're not being taken seriously or you know this page of swords is about in this case there's a little bit of the um, denial energy so you're being denied something it's really interesting you're being denied being seen for me at least let me draw a trinket it'll make some noise apologies in advance ah. okay the hamster so i'm thinking obviously the hamster wheel right that's what makes you hang angry Because you feel like you're running around in circles, doing the same thing. And it's not so much doing the same thing as in you're running around in circles. Um, well, first of all, I know it's a hamster, but now I have the rat race in mind. So it's more of that. Uh, constant push and push and push and push but like there's the repetition part that's really important about 
feeling that you're always starting over and not really getting anywhere. So both Amster Wheel and Rat Race kind of have that feeling of not really progressing. And I think it's about having people's ideas on you progress to another level. You're tired of being looked at and judged uh, always in the same light, with the same words, regarding the same situations, with the same perspective, constantly. That's what it is. And not being seen for who you really are, for the beautiful side of you, Cancer. Let's move to Leo. <laughs> Leo, what is your Tao Oracle message? Let's look at that first. Let me draw. The card is in French, I will translate. Immobilization. L'immobilisation. It says meditation, renewal or automatic renewal, um, being um, sans froid. It means um, keeping your cool, detached, uh, self-accepting, equanimity, equanimity, yeah, and serenity. So it's not an immobilization in the sense, at least here on the oracle, it's not in the sense of uh, stagnation. On the contrary, it's a place where you grow, where you learn to be uh, the observer. <laughs> the hangman came out in reverse as I spoke of you being the observer in the observer role. Let me pull the rest, Leo. The Four of Pentacles closed off and the Five of Wands in reverse. Well, obviously, you're detaching and protecting yourself from conflict here, definitely. You're not wanting to compete. Um, I guess you're putting yourself on the timeout, even if the card is in reverse, it's a little bit of that meaning. Unfortunately, there's a contradiction between the oracle and the hangman in reverse, because the oracle points to being self-accepting, right, and serenity, whereas I think when the hangman is in reverse, he doesn't reach the serenity. He does go on the timeout, he does pause and he does um, hang, you know, like hang out in the sense that um, on the sidelines, he prefers the, the bleachers <laughs> and to be on looking um, whatever situation, uh, dynamic, uh, wherever might be of interest of, of your focus, uh, you'd be looking at that. But you're not gaining uh, the answers. You're not getting the answers that you want, that you're seeking. Most probably uh, for two reasons. One, you're too closed off. Um, you're so closed off that you're, you're not getting. Uh, the answers are not getting through to you. You're not getting the message. You're not getting the point. You don't get the memo. And then the Five of Wands in reverse is a little bit of a, um, because you're not, um, how can I say this? I don't know if it's about participating really, because sometimes um, the Five of Wands is, a little competition doesn't hurt. In this case, it's like, you're kind of throwing the towel But I think, honestly, it's it's about just being on the timeout. 
that would be taking that action of just removing yourself slightly. But honestly, the Four of Pentacles here is the card that is key to unlocking or not answers for yourself. While you're um, on the sidelines unlooking. So let's look, uh, well, let's draw a trinket, I should say. Sorry for the noise. The book. <laughs> it's a little book. It's the knowledge. It's the knowledge that I was describing, the answers that you're seeking. I'm going to put it on the hangman, even if he's in reverse. Um, maybe you're taking time out to read a good book. <laughs> it's possible. Um, maybe there are insights in particular self-help books or any whether it's looking at astrology tarot philosophy religion it could be the bible you could be reading the bible Leo, the torah the talmud any any of the religious uh, texts the upanishad or I forget the Buddhists, um, the Book of the Dead, maybe, for the Buddhists. Anyways. <laughs> so let's leave it at that. Let's go to Virgo now. Virgo, what is your Tao Oracle message? What is that message for you? Two cards fell, but only one turned, so let's see what that is. It says the receptive, not be, but the, so being receptive, but being the one that's receptive. It says the um, passive principle of yin, because it's receptivity, uh, devotion, patience, support, obedience, um, intuition, it says earth and mother as well, right? Yin energy. Let's pull for you, Virgo. Let's see what the tarot says about that. Let me cut. The king of cups, the tower in reverse, and the two of pentacles in reverse. Well, it's a beautiful yin energy, right? The king of cups is all water, all emotions, always uh, soaking in and welcoming, um, appreciating um, marks of, of love, of tenderness, appreciation, you know, like, I say marks, I, in French we say les marques de, so the demonstrations or the, the way that people show you, right? I'm trying to think about, um, I'm drawn to the tower, but I'm also drawn to the two of pentacles in reverse. I think there's a, um, by being in your emotions, you're removing any ambiguity about two things you'd be considering specifically, but it doesn't necessarily have to be necessarily a choice between two, even if it's a two of pentacles. Um, it's considering um, being decisive about what you want so it could be a multitude of things you know what i mean like just being able to make choices in general not just between two just in general i think that's really important here and being receptive to 
I guess what opens up for you, being receptive to the to the options, to the possibilities and the potentials, right? So opening up instead of narrowing, even when you make a decision, um, being open to first to the possibilities. Because otherwise it's quick judgment here. It's like um, a swift avoidance, you know, like, and not out of um, a full-on evaluation of how do you feel about it? How does it sit, fit with me? You know what I mean? So it's really just um, a matter of not going so, so fast here. Because obviously, even if the tower is in reverse, it is still like a lightning um, strike, which is quite fast, of course. So it's the idea that um, of being like impetuous and... Um, kind of ruthless about things or people situations doesn't matter so staying receptive staying open uh, seeing the the bigger picture of things and really um sensing and feeling out for the potentialities i think is extremely enriching so let's draw a trinket for you sorry for the noise <laughs> you get the Roman Coliseum. Um, this little Roman Coliseum. So I always think of Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, so maybe that's what I mean about, first of all, building an empire based on having multiple choices, really having so many possibilities and really feeling out, like I said, and soaking in absorbing digesting even the the nutriments of these possibilities so you need uh, the sediments to settle so by taking more time evaluating, so even if the card is in reverse, the sediments settle when you give it time to, while you sort out and, and understand, you know, like, I'm really seeing the movement of, you know, if you see sediments like just floating down <laughs> in water, um, they sort of oscillate, you know, as they fall down. So it's the Two of Pentacles uh, movement. And it's inside of water, which is the King of Cups realm, which is this uh, receptivity, yin energy. So there's something about letting things sit instead of just striking um, blindly and making rash decisions. Okay. So was this Virgo or Leo? I forget now. I'm so into the reading. Um, I think that was Virgo. <laughs> I hope so. Yes, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to go uh, with my um, with where I think I am. If ever I forgot you, Virgo, I will do you separately on a on a short quick video for you okay so let's do libra what is the towel message for libra for those who have used the timestamp the towel Oracle messages is in French. I will translate. So Libra community, which is so up, right up your alley. The words are uh, being kind, uh, mutual respect, common goals, interdependence, um, reaching agreements and um, strengthened um, bonds. It's really beautiful energy. It's really in line with um, the, the, the kind of relationships that you wish to, to carry all the time and, and that you value, Libra. 
You have a card that flipped. Seven of Cups in reverse. Let me just cut and pull the rest. We're doing only three cards. The King of Wands in reverse and the King of Cups in reverse. So in the community around you, uh, one of the kings could be you, but you could be dealing with uh, two kings. So a lot of masculine energy around you. Being kings, they could even point to more than one person. Um, the way I view this is um, yes, kings are one person in general. But because we have two kings and because we have community and because we have the seven of cups, even if it's in reverse, I can see a multitude of people here. That's what I meant. So you can pick and choose which king you are, whether you're the wands, so the fiery one or the watery one. Either way, um, there's a choice to be made about the kind of relationships and the kind of people and who specifically you create these bonds of community. With. especially when it comes to common goals and mutual respect. I have to point out that the two kings are in reverse. So I feel that people in your surrounding, in your environment, are judging you harshly. Um, their energy, so some of them are fire, some of them are water. Um, masculine energy, um, very... Um, Intransigeant. Intransigeant means like that has like no um, indulgence towards you at all. They're not tolerant. Neither are um, the people that gravitate around them. I will draw one more tarot card for you, Libra. I will actually pull it, but first, because I'm almost tempted to say you're not here. This is really all around you. It's all this community, spe specifically driven by um, a fire and a water sign, masculine energy. So I'd like to see you show up. So let me draw a card for you. You're the Page of Cups. You know, you're the bearer of messages. Um, you're bringing in like a lot of love. You're coming at this community with a lot of love and a lot of offering. You're trying to create bonds and common goals as well as mutual respect. But I feel you are being rejected. You're not included in the community because the seven is in reverse. So the option to become part of the community is uh, taken away from you based on the decision of these two people specifically. It's a very straight to the point reading here. Let me draw a trinket. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> the London Big Ben Tower clock whatever so time is of the essence of course being a, a a giant clock so time belongs to saturn saturn is limits boundaries so no wonder you're feeling like an outsider also, maybe someone specifically from the UK is particularly difficult with you. It could be obviously this King of Cups or the King of Wands. Either way. Um, it's 
if it's not the UK, it's the Commonwealth. And if it's not the Commonwealth, it's any uh, English-speaking um, country, right? So that's the communities that you... Those would be the communities that we're looking at specifically um, that are uh, keeping you from the um, from belonging and partaking. Let us do Scorpio now. Oracle message for Scorpio. What is this energy for you? The Tao message, right? If you've used the timestamp, you might have not heard, but the Oracle is in French. I'm translating for you. It says initial difficulty, so la difficulté initiale. It says <laughs> growing pains, doubts and fear, uh, being a little bit clumsy, um, acquiring strength, so vulnerability and inex inexperience, sorry. So you can see it's uh, someone hatching, right? Not that we hatch, but the idea that uh, it's difficult to hatch uh, for any creature that comes out of an egg <laughs> and obviously you can relate that to the golden egg so if you have that um, that you apply for yourself in terms of your higher self the vision of who you are and um, who you are becoming in this world and your mission on earth it's all related. So let us draw three cards for you, Scorpio. The Ten of Wands in reverse, the Page of Pentacles, and the Emperor in reverse. Well, the difficulty is definitely on the Page of Wands in reverse. Something feels heavy, uh, but you are resilient enough to get through this. But some of the dif difficulty uh, is also seen on the instability showing on the Emperor card. I'm not sure if it's uh, a person specifically that is sort of um, creating difficulty for you. I wouldn't necessarily say that. It's much more in our, like a organization, a structure, something very, um, that has regulations and codes of conduct and specific um, principles maybe. So for any new budding energy, which is represented here by the Page of Pentacles, like someone like relatively new or still learning, but ha does a, has a lot of, um, you know, that is demonstrating a lot of goodwill and um, who's very coachable and uh, kind of already knowledgeable. It's difficult for you to, to hatch in, in a structure that is um, that feels a little bit chaotic, that is not so organized. I think you would like the apprenticeship um, that I see, the relationship of apprenticeship here, um, whether it's to a person, to a group, to a, to a school, to a particular subject, no matter what that is, you'd like it to be more structured. So you are doing best you can uh, in terms of um, kind of, how do you say, um, 
like you're kind of sustaining okay well i'll endure i'll kind of go along with it right but it it is uh, difficult on you um and sometimes you're discouraged and you want to actually just forget it all you have a tendency sometimes to want to wash your hands but you don't you always choose not to but there are moments where you're like oh my gosh i wish i could just pull the plug here <laughs> Um, but there's a lack of structure definitely here that is not um, that you actually would prefer that there be more structure to this um, either to facilitate your learning or to just um, you feel maybe you perceive it to be as not giving you all the skills and everything that you need for your advancement for your growth and for hatching um, the whole of who you are. Align with the vision that I was describing, if this is like a golden egg project or of the like, then you're, you're feeling a little bit unsatisfied. <laughs> so let's get a trinket. Uh, sorry for the noise. Get a little fish. <laughs> so the fish tells me uh, we're in the realm of water. Um, being also Pisces, um, because of the fish. I think that the subject that you're learning is specifically linked to mysticism or something of the sort, right? Something very deep, intricate, And that has no end that you can keep learning all of your life and many maybe many, <laughs> in many many more lives <laughs> you can keep going <laughs> so it feels like this is the 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 little fish here is pointing more to the the subject that you'd be learning about and being water and Pisces, it's mutable. So no wonder you don't feel the structure. Uh, it is sort of um, an ocean of, you know, it, it doesn't really have like the kind of guidelines that you're looking for. It's very Neptunian. It's very uh, kind of foggy, you know. And I think that you can't get around it, honestly. If the fish came out, um, I don't know that it, it'll ever get as structured as you would like it to be, I think. Because in, in essence, um, it is... Um, boundless anyways related to philosophy as well right religion i wonder if it has any ties to um specifically something related to like fishing <laughs> I mean not the subject of study but for some reason um, I'm gonna say something that doesn't really fit here with the overall message but I think you really like to go fishing like for real <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> I think you like that it's weird that would be really specific sorry <laughs> Let's do Sagittarius. <laughs> I 
I think it's the first time I say that in a reading <laughs> about, you know, first of all, uh, for such a specific uh, interest, uh, which is not really in line with the message that were, that was there. Anyways, <laughs> Sagittarius, we're doing uh, first the Tao, uh, sorry, Tao Oracle message. So the card is in French. I will translate for you. Attraction of opposites. L'attraction des opposés. Seduction, temptation, uh, magnetism, a passional, uh, passionate meeting. Half and half, it says. Marriage and sexual union. Okay, this is... <laughs> love energy as well as um, intimate <laughs> not to say the s word uh, on youtube <laughs> okay two cards flipped i'm gonna draw so it is the knight of cups and the king of wands in reverse that's so interesting <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> It's definitely is um, the union is definitely between these two people, right? And the moon in reverse, incredible. What a funny energy. I say funny because this is very feminine, right? And we have two masculine, um, quote unquote, characters here. One is a king, one is a page. The king is fire, the page is water. But they're swimming in the realm of emotions. What's... Um, what I like is that the emotions are shown. They're visible. They're intentionally visible. That's what the moon is uh, revealing here, speaking about. And it's really interesting that um, for some reason, even if the cups could be receptive and more feminine energy, the real feminine energy is here. It's, it's on the moon. But this talks about, you know, recons like attraction of opposites, opposites being masculine and feminine. And so the feminine is kind of on the outside here. It's also, I'm going to turn the card upright temporarily. It's like these two, which are masculine, feminine, yin and yang, etc. But you can imagine here that um, the page uh, is the white, the king is the black. And so the moon here is the lobster, obviously in between, aligned with the full moon up here. So there's a triad energy for sure, but it's triad is not implying a triangle or love triangle in the um, typical sense. There is a bridging energy. There's a feminine bridging energy. Um, yet... It's also simply that the opposites are also residing simply on each of these two characters. So for you, for you, Sagittarius, I feel obviously you would be the wands, the king of wands, because it's fire in your fire. You could have, so a water sign come towards you uh, in the guise of this... Um, Knight of Cups. But at the moment, um, the way the cards are on the table, it's like you're turning your back to this person who's, who's basically chasing after you. Well, chasing. They're coming in on a horse, right? So they're, they have speed. They have momentum at least. 
Whereas um, your energy is a little bit of um, let's wait and see. There's a nighttime energy as well here. I don't know what happens at nighttime. It's probably when you are dreaming about one another the most. Dream because it's the moon. I am also sensing um, there's a little bit of distortion. Even if the moon is in reverse, there's obviously things that are visible, but there's through visibility, even if it's seen and being revealed, there's a distortion there. I'm going to pull one more card for you, Sag. I did that for Libra as well. Because I, I need to see what the distortion is. Or at least, yeah, what the distortion is. The Eight of Pentacles, upright, that's what I drew. Work is in the way, to say it like plainly. There's also, um, for me, the Eight of Pentacles has this, uh, like a repetition energy, right? Like routines and um, always doing the same thing in the same way. So the distortion is about uh, always repeating the same thing. What's beautiful, though, is that whatever was visible is working as well. It's going to work out. It's a very positive. I feel it'll be... Um, you know, eight is uh, sexuality, <laughs> which is the word I wasn't... I used intimacy because I didn't want to say sexuality before, but I'm choosing to say it. And we have 44 is eight when you break it down. Um, and eight is the eighth house in astrology, which relates to sexuality. So no wonder it's um, a sexual union here. Really beautiful reading. Um, if you're in love, this is um, the best thing you could hope for. <laughs> Let's draw a trinket. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me hold it differently. The clover, the four-leaf clover. So this is very lucky. Uh, this is, uh, you're feeling like, both of you are feeling like you're each other's lucky charm. <laughs> and, you know, four-leaf clover is extremely rare. So you feel like that, like that towards one another. Beautiful. I love it. All right, let's look at um, Capricorn. Capricorn. We're doing the Oracle first. So the Tao message. What are we looking at for Capricorn? Draw. So I will translate because the card is in French. So this is increase. 
So it says sharing rewards, or it's also expansion, right? So sharing rewards, uh, overflow expansion, <laughs> um, blooming, encouragement, uh, fertility, and abundance. So let's get the tarot on this. Great energy, uh, Capricorn. What are you growing or let's see what the tarot says for you. The Queen of Wands in reverse, the King of Wands in reverse, and the Hangman. Okay, well, this is incredibly, this is pointing to a love situation. Both of you in reverse, both of you of Wands. This is a power couple energy, or at least uh, a really, really, really good match. Really good match. But there's um, suspended energy between the two of you. There's a time for, um, I just heard there's a time and place for everything. So it's the waiting game, it's the long haul, uh, being in it for the home long haul. Uh, I'm also, obviously the hangman is a sacrifice. So something needs to be sacrificed for the expansion to occur. Super straightforward. Um, I'm not even sure that I need to develop any further. I mean, you're, you're probably going to say, well, that's not much of a reading, but Okay, let's draw one more card then, because I'm not, uh... I was thinking about describing both the Queen and the King of Wands, but I don't need to. I really don't feel the need to. I'm going to look at past the hangman instead, of course, because I'm sure you're interested in that as well. <laughs> the Ten of Cups upright. Wow. No wonder it's an accomplishment. I'm getting goosebumps. You know, it spoke of fertility um, and overflow. It makes me think of, um, and rewards. It makes me think of hitting the jackpot. So whatever you're waiting on as a power couple, it's the ultimate relationship. It's the ultimate happiness. It's the beautiful home and family life you've ever dreamed of. Um, it's a pinnacle, it's a dream come true, like, it's almost like movie-like, right? <laughs> um, like, pinch me, is this real kind of energy? <laughs> Let's draw a trinket. <laughs> the frog, I guess... Um, you know, there's a leap to be taken, you know, so what's interesting for me, the way I see things is the hangman is the waiting energy. Usually I place the trinket on one of the cards, but here I'm get the, the trinket for me, let me show you. <laughs> I'm placing the trinket here because it's like the waiting energy, then you leap. After you wait, you leap. And you leap into the Ten of Cups. <laughs> so it's really beautiful. I love it. Okay, let's do Aquarius. That makes me smile because it makes me happy to see such a beautiful reading. Okay, Aquarius.
What is your Tao message? Oh, your card came out by itself. It says the push towards the uh, the upward push, la poussée vers le haut. It means constant evolution, um, gaining in confidence, accepting challenging challenges. Sorry, promotion and recognition. So beautiful. Let's look at the tarot. So the tarot. What are you pushing upward, Taurus? Um, what? <laughs> the chariot. <laughs> Aquarius. That's the first card out. Let me cut and pull now. The Seven of Wands and the Nine of Swords in Reverse. Okay, well, there's obviously movement. Um, wanting to go the distance towards... Um, okay, let me see if I can word it properly. There's going the distance, so that could mean... You need to go somewhere, you might need to go far or farther than you anticipated uh, to reach something, someone. Because the upward push doesn't ha necessarily have to always be upward, right? Towards the sky. It can be towards any direction. Any direction, even down if you want. But not that you would go down, but if it means you have to go south, you know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking in that way, like north, south, east, west. Um, vertically or, or horizontally speaking. Verticalement, horizontalement. So, it's multi-directional. So, you don't have to limit yourself. Um, which is in line with wanting a promotion, wanting to grow, wanting to, what are the other keywords again? You know, getting uh, more recognition and also gaining in confidence. This is a success card, you know, like reaching for the top in terms of maybe a different... So, of course, it's up, it's top, it's success, it's... Um, you know, the top of the mountain, however you want to see it. But I really insist about, don't think the only direction is towards the sky. I think it's it, it can be uh, in all kinds of directions. The reason I say that is that I'm sensing that you might have a direction that you want to go into in mind on your mind anywho seven of uh, wands and the nine of swords you know on this on the rider weight the seven of wands is the man on top of a little um i guess a small mound and he's fencing off against his assailant, is um, the people that are trying to get to him, like the assault, right? But he's alone on that little mound, um, trying to defend his newly acquired, um, I guess, position. <laughs> so it really all talks about getting to the top or getting higher in our hierarchy or and having to maybe defend that position with you know when success comes you might feel that some people envy you or that they're trying to trip you uh, to fall down it's possible that you feel that so you have to stay very alert you have to kind of Protect yourself, protect your energy. I 
I am glad to see the Nine of Swords in reverse. So it is stressing you out, but not to the point that you can't function, which I'm glad to see here. I don't know why, but you're able to see like what is a real threat and what isn't. But there are many threats around you because the Nine of Swords here, whether those are imagined or not, because there usually are on that card, um, I think some of them are real or else you wouldn't be defending yourself. Um, I think also the Nine of Swords, um, I'm, I'm gonna say it, it feels like you're almost accepting the challenges, right? Because there were there was the idea of uh, facing challenging challenges. <laughs> it says accepting the challenges. I forgot that it said that precisely, but that's exactly the energy. You're taking them on, first of all, because you are in a position of strength, but also because you're not letting those challenges um, sort of tear you apart, right? Especially on the mental level. You're able to actually um, keep your head straight, uh, screwed on straight. <laughs> Very strong, powerful mental energy on this. Um, I mean... There are other cards that would show an even, an even greater strength of character than the Nine of Swords, but in the context of this reading, this card takes on this particular signification here. Because you're very successful twice at um, having reached the top. Let's get a trinket. Or having reached any destination to go in line with, you can go in any direction. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> the beacon. So, the, the lighthouse if you want. I'm gonna put that on, on the chariot. Maybe you're going towards the sea, which is a simple thing to say or a simplistic thing to say but I'm saying it anyway it is a Cancerian card so you might really love the sea the water living by the water and um, so you might want to go by the sea it could also be the guiding direction right this is what's calling you in the direction that you need to go into no matter what that direction is it's also, you know, this light is inspiring you to a degree so I can move this trinket on the Nine of uh, Swords in reverse. It's inspiring you to... It's almost like the image of, okay, all the... Whether it's like having hope, having uh, a light to guide you in the darkness, because this is the darkness card, right? Uh, being in the dark because it's at night and sleepless nights and nightmares and nightmarish thoughts. And so the light in the lighthouse is this glimmer of hope that you possess inside or that you, you know, see as what helps you get through all of it, you know, no matter how difficult that is. Because there are difficulties around you. I mean, this is, you're constantly having to fence off people. Let's do Pisces. Pisces. 
what is your tarot oracle message? Let me pull that card for you. <laughs> interior truth I'm laughing because I think I've pulled it I don't remember which sign but I I think it was like Gemini or something I'm not sure but out of a big deck it's funny it came out twice so interior truth is so la vérité intérieure is a mess uh, wisdom of the heart vision clarity purity intuitive knowing conscious conscious or consciousness sorry or awareness and recognizing illusion so let's get the tarot and see what is this uh, particular truth or interior truth how does it express itself for you pisces Let me pull. Two of Cups. Wow. Five of Pentacles in reverse. And the Hermit in reverse. Wow. <laughs> Two energies of uh, coming back. Right? Someone missing you, coming back to you. Uh, someone that loves you greatly, your soulmate. Your other half. It could be self-love, of course, with the um, interior truth or inner truth, I should say. Not interior, inner. You know, it did speak of the wisdom of the heart, right? So, and the inner knowing. So, it's beautiful. I think you know someone um, that has been separate from you, isolating themselves from you purposely, uh, that has retreated. You know they miss you. You know they want to come back. You know that um, they can't be alone from you. The other thing which is really impressive now that I'm seeing it this way. Um, I think that whoever, because, I, you know, there's two energies of coming out and coming back towards you, etc. But it, it's clearly, there's two cups, so it's like both people are feeling the same thing towards one another. So it's not just you feeling this way, the or the other person, I should say. It's really both ways here. I'm gonna draw one more card. Ten of Wands in reverse. It requires um, I said it, and I didn't define what it was. So the love is there. You're both missing one another. You both want to return to one another. It feels like um, I don't know why it is that both of you need to drop the baggage. And I'm going to keep reading as both because we established that it goes both ways, specifically in this reading. So you both have to drop baggage. But there's something that feels very heavy between the two of you as well, right? Exceptionally, I will draw one more and it turns by itself and it's the hangman. 
Okay. It's because the returning hasn't happened because you're in a you're you're basically waiting. Both of you are waiting. Because there's a sacrifice that needs to be made, there's baggage that needs to be dropped. Specifically, you each have a load to drop, and it's a heavy load, it's not a small load. That's why it's taking time because it's a very heavy load. Or there's a multitude of different things that consist of a heavy load. That consists the heavy load. <laughs> How can I say this? Uh, I'm thinking in French. I'm sorry. My sentence wasn't correct. Uh, but I hope you understood. It's about many things to let go because the sum of those creates a big load. <laughs> Okay, let's get the trinket. Sorry for the noise. A spider web. You know, it is for both of you uh, many things because the web is obviously, there's, there's many things going on there's more than one thread in a web. So there's a lot of entanglements. And you know, in this case, the ones are placed all in a, almost like in a web shape on this one, right? So I don't know what it is. I mean, it's almost like you have to drop something. Um, like okay i am gonna go there i am it feels feminine energy it feels like mother energy because sometimes the spider points to uh, specifically women so i don't know um how can i say this I'm being careful here. <laughs> it's mother energy. So I don't know exactly what the baggage is, but it's not, you might choose if you want to interpret it as one single person, one woman, one mother. Fine, you can decide to do that if you want to keep it at that. If you are wanting to again, I have to be careful with my words here. If you're wanting, um a broader answer which I'm offering here it's not just one woman one mother there are in my mind at least three if not more maybe four mothers maybe so maybe even eight because I'm thinking the spider, eight legs. There's something about eight women. They might not all be uh, mothers, but I really invite you to think wider <laughs> than just um, one specific person. That's my offering to you, Pisces. But you can decide to... <laughs> 
stay narrow or you can decide to uh, be open to the possibility of getting more insight by um, accepting that it's a plurality of uh, people here that have to be sort of let go of, uh, released, um, dropped, sacrificed, There you are. Thank you so, so much, guys, for uh, listening to the whole video, if you have, because some people do. And if that's the case, I thank you greatly. Even if you've only um, hit the timestamps for your specific placements, I'm totally okay with that because that's the whole point of the all signs reading and the timestamps. Either way, I'm super grateful for all of you for even being here. Uh, thank you for supporting me, and I hope you enjoy the messages uh, truly. Please like the video, share, and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Good night.